I think most of you already know this by now, but when it comes to sports, one of the biggest things I absolutely love is pandemonium. Pandemonium and crazy trades and trade rumors and ideas, players getting swapped around, big fights, stuff like that. Hockey gets a lot more fun when you start talking about the crazy examples of guys that could be on the move and players that could be coming back in return. And it's why I'm going to double down, I'm going to put my foot on the ground and say this. Vancouver Canucks Twitter, the past like two days, has been some of the most crazy entertaining hockey fodder to read because every single hour it appears we're getting ourselves a new rumor it's a new article it's a new radio hit talking about Besser being on the move oh is he more likely to go than Miller oh Tyler Mott is going to demand a boatload of money oh does that mean you should go out there and trade him okay is Miller even on the block anymore some people think he is others think he is not Bruce Boudreaux what are your thoughts about the players getting traded there's just so much to go over when it comes to Vancouver that it's tough for me to go out there and make one video. Like, this thing about Bowen Byram and Miller and everything, this is one video on a day where we could have chosen, like, four or five other topics to talk about when it comes to just Vancouver Canucks trade rumors specifically. Not even like, okay, let's update on Niels Hoaglander and talk about what he's been doing to improve his game, or let's talk about Canucks prospects in the SHL that are doing very well. No, it's not even stuff like that. It's strictly just let's talk about trade rumors. Let's go over onto an athletic piece published by Drance and Dollywall. Take a look at this right here. Link is in the description as always. What we're hearing about the Canucks priorities 17 days from the NHL's trade deadline. Now, again, athletic. We're not going to go ahead and screenshot this. We're going to go over onto Twitter and take a look at some of the summaries that people have provided when it comes to Vancouver and what we're hearing about the team, or at least not what I'm hearing, but what Dollywall and Drance are hearing about the team. One of the biggest things that popped itself up in this conversation was the JT Miller trade idea again. Not a surprise, everybody's talking about Miller, right? But the article goes over a few suitors, talks about, you know, some teams are involved more than others, etc., etc. But one name sure to interest our Vancouver audience that we're surprised to hear linked to the Canucks by one of our contacts this week in conjunction with the Colorado Avalanche's interest in Miller, Bowen Byram. It would be such a risk to trade for Byram right now, Taj says. We'll get into that a little bit later. But we also had Grady Sass who went out there and posted one of the actual things from the article. That's exactly what it says in the piece. It also talks about how Bowen Byram returned to the ice this week, but he hasn't played since early January. Again, we're going to highlight this stuff as we go on. But... Bowen Byram, this is what I was talking about. Pandemonium, the craziest rumors coming out here. We're two weeks removed from the trade deadline, and we're already starting to talk about big-name prospects like Bowen Byram of all names. Like, no disrespect to JT Miller, no disrespect to Braden Schneider, no disrespect to Longquist or anybody else whom we have discussed in these conversations, but Bowen Byram is arguably, like, the most valuable piece that we have highlighted at all. Like, I'm sorry, I'd rather have Byram over Schneider, I'd rather have Byram over Lundqvist, I'd rather have Byram over any of the prospects that we discussed from Minnesota, and from Calgary, and from Boston. Heck, for sure, Boston. Like, Bowen Byram is, okay, I know he's not a rookie anymore, he's not a prospect, he kind of exonerated himself from that status with this season's worth of play, but he still is, in my opinion, one of the best young players in the entire gosh darn world. And we're going to go over the profile here to highlight just why. So, Bowen Byram, 20 years old, 6'1", 190, a left-handed defenseman, signed in his entry-level deal to the end of next season. He was taken fourth overall by the Colorado Avalanche in the 2019 NHL entry draft. Now, when I saw the pick made three years ago, one of the biggest things that I thought about immediately was the fact that, oh crap, Colorado just took a really good stud defenseman with the fourth overall pick which is exactly what they did two years before this draft when they took Kale McCarr in the same spot after Heisken and Patrick and Hishier. Kale McCarr is one of the best players in the world today, period. And Bowen Byram was kind of touted in a similar fashion. Now, they're not the same player. Kale McCarr plays with a lot more strength in his stride, and he's a lot more of a power skater than Bowen Byram is. But Byram was still just so fantastically good when he was drafted. He was like... 
I think, the first ever defenseman to ever lead the WHL playoffs in scoring, and he did that as a draft eligible. So very good for him to see all the production coming out there. Plus, of course, you know, he's in my backyard. Everybody here in Vancouver that's a Canucks fan is also a Giants fan, mostly. So yeah, we have ourselves Bo and Byram showcases at the Langley Event Center all the time. You see, he made the NHL last season, 2 points, 19 games, wasn't really that big of a game changer, but he was only 19, so we'll let it slide. This season though, 11 points, 18 games, when he was playing, he was extraordinary. And you talk about the Colorado Blue Line being as good as it is right now, what with Kale McCarr, Devon Tabes, you have of course Samuel Gerrard and Eric Johnson still doing their thing, Bowen Byram was arguably better than everybody here with the exception of Makar. It's just, as it's highlighted in the athletic piece, there were a whole bunch of injury struggles that stopped Byram from continuing the season. He's been out since January. And so, there's a whole bunch of risk, as Taj said right here, when it comes to trading for Bowen Byram, because everything that has been slowing him down, it doesn't seem like just another bump in the road. This seems like a full-on roadblock that's going to take a lot more time and development to get past. And when you hear about the magnitude of what exactly is going on with this guy, he's been dealing with lingering issues involving past head injuries, according here to Denver Gazette Sports. It's been really, really tough for Byram. And so, there's a whole bunch of risk when it comes to trading for this kind of player, but I will go out there and make the argument that if you want to trade for a Bowen Byram, his value is probably worse today than it was, let's say, when he started out the year and he was scoring all those points. And so, when you talk about the idea of a JT Miller trade and the Colorado Avalanche being one of the teams that actually do want this guy, because it wasn't just highlighted here, Darren Drager had a bit on Sakaris and Price where he said that Miller also had interest from the Avalanche, and then there was David Pagnota who talked with Irfan Gaffar on the fourth period, saying the same thing, yeah. Avalanche, they're going all in. And so, with this Colorado thing in our crosshairs right now, it all of a sudden makes me super intrigued, because New York has a good prospect pool. Everybody knows that. They've got good young players, they've drafted well for the most part, and they've got some good depth defensemen in the AHL that are ready, or almost ready, to take over an NHL club's blue line in the next few years. Colorado is a different beast, because Bowen Byram is so gosh darn good, and he's a local guy, that it makes so much sense to me why the Vancouver Canucks would be interested in this kind of player. Now, if you do Miller for Byram just one for one, I honestly think that Vancouver could get a little bit more out of Colorado in this trade. Mostly because the uncertainty with Byram and his head injuries bring him down a little bit, plus the fact that JT Miller is like one of the top point scorers in the league this year. He's so versatile just all situations type of player right here. And with the Colorado Avalanche maybe losing out in the cadre next season, maybe somebody else too, it could be seen as a lot more valuable for a team like Colorado to get a Miller because he's locked down for an extra year. Now, I get it. There's a lot of Canucks fans that would go out there and say, okay, Byram is good and all, but like, do we really need more left-hand defense? There's Justin Barron, who is also in that Colorado system, who is a right-handed guy and who probably has a pretty good top four ceiling as well. And while I'll agree with you there, that's a pretty good point to bring up, for me, Bowen Byram is just so good that the left side, right side argument doesn't really, like, matter anymore. You know, is that kind of fair to say? Like, sure, there might be a lot more positionally aligning defensemen that the Canucks could use, like a Braden Schneider in New York or like a Justin Barron if you want to keep with the Colorado thing. But Bowen Byram, when healthy, to me is like one of the best U21 defensemen in the entire gosh darn world. And that's the kind of guy that I would go out there and say, okay, look, let's try you on the right. Let's try to play it with Quinn Hughes. See how that works. You go from Byram McCarr to Byram Hughes. That sounds tremendous. And this is such a polarizing topic because I'm like 99% sure that anybody that's seen Bowen Byram play in this city, like, you know how good Bowen Byram is. Everybody was raving about this guy in 2019, and he was the top taken defenseman for a reason. He honestly could have been eligible for the call, or he was eligible for the call, but like, I think he could have legitimately been a top candidate had he just stayed healthy and had he played significant minutes like he was playing before he got taken out. Devontae, Samuel Gerrard, these guys are producing like crazy, and I feel like Bowen Byram could have been right there with the rest of the Colorado Blue Line had he just been able to play, so... For Bowen Byram, his name being mentioned here as a potential Canucks target in the JT Miller trade makes me very excited, but 
with the other rumors popping up saying, okay, maybe they're more inclined to move Besser instead of Miller. Maybe they're not going to trade Miller. Maybe they're going to trade Garland instead. This is what I was talking about, man. Pandemonium. So many rumors going on in the past few days that it's getting difficult to keep track. But honestly, I love it. I'd rather have it like this and have it be complete radio silence, am I right? So let me know in the comments all your thoughts about the idea of a Bowen Byram acquisition by the Canucks. And if you're a Colorado Avalanche fan, please let me know in the comments why you would not want to trade Byram for Miller. Because I know there's going to be a good amount of people that say that, no, man, go back to riding your own city. Go back to destroying everything. We're not trading away Byram for Miller, man. Like... Okay. Okay, so if you're not trading Byram for Miller, then what are you giving up instead? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rajasthan 99. And bye. <laughs>